Scorpio, thanks for visiting. This is your reading for March the 25th to March the 31st. And uh, if you like this reading, please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you would like to. My throat's a bit croaky. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to cough. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, do all that if you'd like to. You don't have to. Um, I am, yeah, I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to get on with your reading. I'm not going to go on and on. The first card you have your past is the Two of Cups. So, I'm seeing someone trying to get together, someone trying to be closer than they actually are, but there's some kind of block in front of them. Now, I think there might have been someone around you who was trying to um, find some courage find some courage and I think they were trying to find this courage they were struggling to find this courage it was something they aspired to it was up in the sky higher than them like the red lion on this card um, and I don't think they could reach what they wanted to they couldn't reach that courage they needed this courage because I think they wanted to reach out to you they wanted to talk to you like this man is reaching out to this woman they wanted to do that now I don't know if this person works with you I think they might work with you because I'm seeing you connecting in terms of ideas. That's what that caduceus in the middle means. Um, it means an exchange of ideas. It can mean medicine and other things as well. So um, you've had these kinds of exchanges of ideas, uh, work kind of conversations, practical things. I think you've had a lot of conversations with this person actually. But when it came to expressing themselves and their feelings for you, that's when they became a little bit nervous and they needed to find that courage and they couldn't quite find it. Um, and I think they were trying to manifest that. They were trying to manifest a romantic connection with you. The man on this card has a wreath of red roses on his head um, and red roses obviously symbolize manifestation. So that's what was on this person's head. Manifestation was in their mind, on their head. They were trying to manifest a deeper connection with you. Um, but they'd only visualized that. It was just in their mind. Um, they hadn't actually done this. They hadn't found the courage to do this, to put this into action. But again, I'm just getting this feeling that this person is a little bit, um, a little bit dreamy, actually. Um, they think a lot, they dream a lot, but maybe taking action is a little bit scary to them. I think they're fine on practical things, but I think when it comes to things to do with emotions, um, they're very, very frightened. That's what I'm seeing um, in that card. The next card you have your past is the star. So yeah, this is the most beautiful card. I love this card. Um, so yeah, this person definitely had hope for you. That's what this star is. Um, you know, the hope, hope in a star, whatever it is. And um, they have hope for some kind of, or they had hope for some kind of future with you. But again, there was hesitation and this kind of fear, I think, that if they told you how they felt, they might be rejected. So they were turning their back on kind of going for this hope. This woman has her back to the star. They want it, but they're kind of turning their back on it because they're a bit frightened. That's what I'm seeing. Now, they didn't want you to reject them. So I know this is a positive card and well, it can be either depending on a lot of things, but um. I'm actually seeing a little bit of sadness around this person. They might have been going through a lot of other problems as well, family problems maybe. And I think they might have spoken to you about these problems as well, just as a friend. So that might give you a clue as to who this is because they're not showing you how they feel. So, but again, um, this is how they see you. Someone who's really attractive, someone who's really physically attractive, like the woman on this card. And the star card could also be about things coming to light or things that need to come to light. I think you might have been in the process of trying to find something out, trying to find some information out. And I think you needed this information for your future or for your future security or something like that. Um, something to make you feel secure. That's the kind of thing I'm getting around this. Sometimes this card can be about feeling a bit vulnerable. This woman's naked, obviously, and we're watching her. So uh, that um, symbolizes vulnerability sometimes. So you might have been feeling a little bit like, you know, you needed to find this information out to help you to feel secure, uh, maybe financially secure, might have been that. Now, this is starlight, it isn't sunlight. 
So I think you were starting to uncover whatever this was, but it wasn't totally clear to you yet because you're in the starlight, not the sunlight. Uh, so you weren't able to see everything properly yet. Now that doesn't mean that you won't, it just means that you weren't able to see everything totally clearly at this time. So I think you should keep on working at uncovering this. I feel as if I need to tell you that. Don't give up on this. Don't give up hope on this with this beautiful star because you do have um, positivity coming to you if you keep on working toward this. That's what I'm seeing. So the last card you have your past is the tower, yes. Now, sometimes this card can be about um, a tower of dishonesty that was built up over time. And I think this is about this thing that you might have been trying to uncover or investigate. And I think someone's either been lying or keeping something from you, some important information, probably this information you're trying to find out. And this is all going to be revealed to you. And I think you sense that. I think you sense this. You, you know, you could feel something like this was happening. Something was being hidden from you and a person was hiding something from you. Exactly what it was, wasn't clear to you, but you could ha you had these instincts around this. Now, I'm actually seeing someone who thought they were on top of things. They thought they had everything in control, and they still do. They might still feel like that, because I don't know if this tower has actually come down yet, but it will definitely at some time. Now, I think they're probably a little bit arrogant as well. I'm just looking at this crown on this card. So they think they're in charge. They almost think they're like the king of everything, the king of the castle kind of thing, in control of everything. I think what's going to happen is that one tiny thing is going to be revealed and then this is going to start as kind of a domino effect. One thing or one lie is going to reveal another one and another one and so on and on and on and things are going to start to unravel and then they'll lose their crown. They won't be in control of this anymore. And this it's a little bit sad actually because I more than a little bit because I they have some people around them, I think, relying on them. Uh, a lot of people around them, uh, people that trust them. But these people are going to be hurt, I think, because when this happens, they're going to go scurrying away. They're going to fall away from this person, like these poor people falling out of this tower. They're going to lose a lot of support. That's what I'm seeing. But, you know, you are going to find this out, and I think it might even play out publicly or out in the open in some way maybe. And I think a lot of people are going to realize who this person truly is. That's what I'm seeing in that card. So the first card you have for your present is the Knight of Cups. So you're not like that. You're in control of things. You're in control of your life. This is what I'm seeing and you're in control of where you're going. There's a big difference between the two of you. They think they're in control, but it's a facade. You know that you're in control. Um, you might not be in control of a great big huge tower with a crown on the top of it, but what you have, you're in control of. That's what I'm seeing. Um, it might not be grand, but it's yours. Now, I think you're in control of your work life. You're in control of all of those kind of things. Uh, you're in more of control. You're more in control, I should say, of that area of your life than you have been for a long, long time. But I think around love, around love, um, there's still a lot of unsurety around you. Now, I actually think you might be, you might be dealing with someone who's a little bit, um, a little bit on and off. Now, I think you might be a little bit like that as well. And that's because you're reflecting them. It's, it's this kind of backwards and forwards weird dance that's going on that I'm seeing. They move forward and then they move back. And then when they move back, you don't want to chase them, which is understandable. I don't like that either. So you move back as well. So it's kind of this backwards and forwards, like a rubber band, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now I'm actually seeing, I'm actually seeing that this might have been going on for a long, long time. Um, I don't think this connection's reached a proper level of maturity yet because of this kind of backwards and forwards and these kind of games. Now they might be there, they might be playing games, but you don't want to play games. You don't want to play games, so this is probably really frustrating you. And um, But there's a fine line between confronting or having it out with someone, saying, you know, where are we going? Where are we going? We need to talk. Stop this going backwards and forwards. Because that kind of shows an insecurity. 
and then feeling like you're having to chase them. You don't want to do one and you don't want to do the other either. You know, you might be thinking something like, if I have to chase them for answers, are they truly interested in me? I don't want to chase someone, but I do care about them. I actually do have a lot of feelings for them. I just want to know where I am. But if I ask them and kind of confront them, I don't want to look really kind of needy and all of that. So there's all of that going on with that. Now, yeah, this has been going on for a while, I think. And I think things are going to have to change, and you know that. One way or the other, something is going to have to change if this is all resonating with you. Um, and I don't want to tell you what to do, but to me it's just feeling exhausting. I'm feeling exhausted just looking at this. Um, it doesn't feel good to me. So, yes, yeah, something has to change. Either you're going to have to kind of uh, stop these, you know, tell them to stop these games or kind of make them stop these games. You can't make anyone do anything, but kind of talk to them about that and see if they will. If they won't stop these games, needy or not, I think you're going to have to say something. Uh, if they won't stop, you might have to move on. That's the sad reality of it, I'm sorry to say. So the next card you have for your present is the Ace of Pentacles. So again, your money, your job, career, all of that kind of thing. It's improving a lot, especially when you think about where you used to be. Now. I'm saying that, but I can I can sense that it might not feel that way to you because I'm getting this feeling that you were better off on paper at least um, financially at another time in your life than you are now. But at that time, you weren't as free as you are now. Now I'm not sure why that is. I think it might have to do with another person. You might have had to rely on someone else at one time, which was fine at the time. Uh, a lot of people don't have that option, but now you're away from that person, you're in charge of things, you might have less than what you had, but it's yours and you're in charge of it. That's what I'm seeing. Now, sometimes being in charge of things can be a bit scary, but you're much better off than you used to be. You really, really are, even if you don't feel like that. Um, you might look back on times that you had with this person, you had a lot more and you might have said, you might be saying to yourself, I wish I had more, I wish I had this. No. You are better off as you are. That's what I'm seeing. I also think you might be working towards something else. It might be something outside of your normal job. Uh, it might be a side business. It might be something like that. Now, I think at this time you can do this. It might feel like a bit more of a struggle than it was when you had this, uh, when you had more finances around you or you had this person around you in your past. But now, you can do this because you don't have to answer to anyone. I think if you would have tried to start this back then, you would have had to answer to this person or you would have had a lot more problems doing this than you do now. You might have less money and less resources now, but you have more freedom and you can do this and you're at the center of your world now. You're at the center of this now. Um, and I'm just looking at the path. You can just see the top of this golden path on this card. It's a narrow path. There's only room for one person and that person's you on this path. So even if you're struggling, even if it takes a long time, keep working on this because you're by yourself. You're at the center of all of this. And um, I think the fact that you even have this card shows you that you are on the right path. Rewards are going to come to you. Keep on walking down the path. Keep on going the way you're going. People are going to help you. I think as you go down this path, some people are going to advise you. I'm also seeing the possibility of you maybe teaming up with another person as well down the line. That's what I'm seeing around that. So the next card or the last card you have for your present is death, yes. So this might sound a bit strange. I'll just try and tell you um, what I'm seeing in this card. Um, I think you might have been having a bit of communication with this person in the tower card. I don't think you're totally not talking to them. I think you do, you're having a little bit of some kind of communication with them. Um, it's limited communication. Um, I don't think they're an easy person to have a conversation with. Um, but there was some contact and there still is a little bit now. But I think at this point in time, I think communication might be coming to an end between you. It might be that you have to communicate through someone else. You might end up stopping all communication. I'm still, you know, I'm getting this feeling that these things that are being uncovered are still very, very important to you. So you're still going to have to have some kind of connection with them for a while. 
until something's sorted out. But this communication, again, I'm seeing might be going through someone else um, or something, or it might just happen in writing. It might happen by email. I think you might be saying, you know, I can't deal with this person anymore. I'm going to have to just drop communication directly with them. It might be that. Now, I'm also seeing a little bit of danger around this. You're not in danger, but um, just watch out for them. I'm getting a warning feeling around this because sometimes, yeah, they're a loose cannon. That's what I'm getting. They're a loose cannon. Now, when people fall, especially dishonest people or people who are holding, people who are kind of hiding things or holding things back from someone, kind of hiding things away from them, um, and they're doing this dishonestly and they're found out, they try to claw their way back up. And if they're desperate, sometimes they don't care about the consequences. They don't care who's around them. They don't care what they do. So again, you're not in danger, but I'm just getting this feeling that they might lash out. They might behave erratically. So just be aware of that if this is all uh, resonating with you. And this is another reason for you to cut, to kind of cut direct, cut, cut direct contact with this person. So that's another reason for you to do that. That's what I'm seeing. Um, just for your own peace of mind. Um, so the first card you have for your future is the Four of Cups. So even though I'm seeing you having to kind of stop direct contact with them, you're still going to have to have some contact. Maybe that's via email. Maybe that's via text. Maybe it's um, through another person. Um, but you are going to have to have some kind of negotiation between you and this person eventually, um, which I'm sorry to say, because dealing with dishonest, difficult people is not something that anyone wants to do. Um, but this is what's going to have to happen if you get to the end, if you want to get to the end of this process. So again, I hate to say this, but it's probably going to be a bit of a long and drawn out process. I'm actually seeing someone who's in denial of the situation that they're in. So yes, if this is resonating, you're going to be dealing with dishonesty, denial, and stubbornness as well. Now, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you keep that contact to a minimum, or at least by text, email, or through someone else, so that when you want to speak to them, when you feel ready and up to it, you can open the email, open the text, and then look at it then, or talk to the person. Don't have them on the end of the line kind of texting and calling and you feel like you have to answer them whenever they feel like it. That's not going to work because they're a complete loose cannon. They're completely kind of erratic, not rational. So be very careful around that. Yeah, again, take care of yourself. Get as much rest as you can away from this situation. It's not going to be easy, but this is just how it's going to be. Now, I am seeing positivity at the end of this. You have the Ace of Pentacles. And sometimes, again, when I see the Ace of Pentacles, I see this card meaning that, you know, you're going to go through something and go through the work to go through this and come out the other side. Because again, if you look at the Ace of Pentacles, there is a, a round kind of opening in a hedge. And so it's about going through going through a difficult process and coming out the other side. And then you've got the mountain and you can start to go upwards. So there's that as well. But stick with this again, don't give up. There are rewards at the end of this, financial rewards, I think. It's not going to be a sprint. It's going to be a marathon and it's going to be a marathon, I think, that has roadblocks in it, potholes, all kinds of things, birds flying at you, all kinds of crazy things. So be very careful watch where you're going, watch your step, and think of it as a long-term thing, but don't ever give up. That's what I'm seeing. The next card you have your future is the King of Pentacles. So yeah, financial rewards are at the end of this. This is a reminder. This is what you're going to get at the end of this process. Again, this King has worked hard for many years to be where he is. So again, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a long process, but you're in control. You're in more control of the situation than you think you are. Your opposition is not in control. They've lost the trust of a lot of people around them. That's what I see in the tower card. Now, they used to have a lot of people around them. They used to have a lot of people supporting them. But by this time, they'll be a lot more isolated, like this king, he's by himself. 
they were the king, the top of the tower, they had people around them, the people fled away, and now they're a lonely old king, and they're not even a king now. Um, and they're not used to being alone, they're not used to that. I'm seeing that really, really clearly. They're used to having a lot of people around them, they're really going to be struggling with that as well. So that's another thing that's really going to injure them and that might make them lash out as well and behave in this kind of erratic way. So just be careful around that as well. So the last card you have for your future is the Five of Cups. So I'll just lift that up so you can see the cups because you might not see it on camera. Um, yeah, not everyone's going to abandon them. A lot of people are. Um, they're going to feel like they are because the man on this card's staring at the spilled cups, the ones that they've lost, but he still has the two upright ones behind him. So it's going to feel like they've lost everyone because I think, again, part of their whole identity was built around their popularity, having a lot of people around them. And um, yeah, now they only have a few people around them, a very close-knit group of people, might even just be their mother and their brother or someone, um, but they're going to stick with them. Um, now, I know this sounds really sad, really, really negative, and uh, if you're cross-watching, cross I'm not saying this is necessarily about you, so don't be angry with me. But yeah, Leo, keep on going through th down all these paths that you're on. You're on the correct paths. The paths are going to meet as well. They're going to join up. Um, the financial... and Yeah, I'm seeing that because... Again, look at this Ace of Pentacles and look at the path. It's a yellow path. It's like the yellow brick road. And you know when they all kind of went apart and no one knew which way to go. Uh, so this is going to be yellow roads joining together. And um, the path of this negotiation leading to some kind of financial reward is going to join up with the path of the Ace of Pentacles where you're working on this important thing. So the finance of that is going to meet the other one and it's going to help you in this business or this job or whatever this thing is that you're doing. That's what I'm seeing. So keep going, keep going on these paths. So Leo, I hope this resonated. As you know, general readings can't always resonate with every single Leo in the whole world. But again, if you like this reading, please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment if you'd like to. Thank you so, so, so much for watching.